hello guys welcome to my channel so we have seen handover preparation we have also seen handover execution now this is a final lecture uh, of uh, handover completion and as you know this is the third part okay let me write it here that is handover completion it is okay so let's start uh, but, but before starting uh, let me give you a quick review um, it's what's happening in ha what what has happened in handover preparation and handover execution in handover preparation we have seen this indirect tunnel has been formed like this okay that is source e node b target e node b and sdw between these entities this indirect tunnel which is shown by red color here has been established and in handover execution procedure uh, the final that the finally we have seen that Downlink packets are following the path from SGW to source e node B and from source e node B to again to SGW and from SGW to target e node B and from target e node B to UE. This is the path of downlink packets and the path of uplink packets is from UE to target e node B and from target e node B to your SGW. This is the part of uh, this is the path of uplink packets. So this is happening in handover execution or you can say the current scenario. Okay. So now the purpose of this, let me remove these paths. We don't it we don't need it right now. So the purpose of the purpose of this handover completion procedure is to remove these indirect tunnels because uh, unnecessarily uh, these resources are occupied by source e node B, SDW and target e node B. So we have to remove these unnecessarily occupied resources. So for this, uh, let's start the targeting node. We will send a message which is known as handover notify. If you remember in XO handover, we also uh, have done the same thing that we remove the direct tunnel, but here we have to remove this indirect tunnel. And in X2 handover, instead of this HO notify message, the name of message was path switch request. Okay, so handover notify message uh, has been sent from target e node B to MME. Okay, and the content, uh, let me remind you in handover preparation message, one more TID which is known as S1 target e node B. TID number C was also created. We haven't used it so far, so it will be used in handover completion. But okay, it was created during handover preparation that part. Okay, so this TID that is TID number C, let me write it here as well. That is S1 target e node B TID number C. This is the part of this handover notify message. Okay, so this handover notify message is uh, sent from target e node B to MME. So MME has received this uh, TID that is TID number C. Okay, now what MME will do? A signaling is also present that is S. There is GTPC protocol also works between MME and SGW. Okay, and uh, the signaling is there between MME and SGW. So MME will send the message number two, which is known as MBR. MBR stands for modify bearer request. Modify beer request okay and the content of this message is the same tid okay mm -hmm. that is tid number c okay so sgw has received this tid that is s1 target e node b tid number c okay so this tid is of target e node b but it has been received by sgw so what will happen this sgw will create a bearer towards target e node b 
okay so this downlink s1 bearer will also be established okay let me overlap these lines okay so this downlink s1 bearer has also been established okay okay so so this downlink s1 bearer has been established so after that <coughs> so let's say this is the process number three so the message number four will be your modify bearer response message i'm also representing it with mbr okay i'm not writing the full form it's modify bearer response message which has been sent from sgw towards mme okay means it is acknowledging that uh, i have received this tid and i have made this downlink bearer as well although uh, means uh, this downlink bearer is not used uh, for forwarding the downlink packets right now okay it will be used but uh, after some procedures i'll tell you how okay this downlink packet are still following the path is from sgw to source e node b source e node b to again sgw sgw to target e node b and target e node b to ue okay okay so let's continue okay now system has to notify e node b that uh, bearer has been established and how now i have to switch the path of downlink packets so how it will do there are end marker packets used in lte let's call it message number five that is em packet it stands for end marker packet it's packet a p s p a c k e t it's end marker packet that is em packet so when sgw initiate this end marker packet uh, okay through this path that is uh, sgw to source e node b source e node b to sgw and sgw to e node b so as soon as e node b receives this em packet it confirms uh, means network is confirming target e node b that from now onwards i am not going to uh, provide you downlink packets through this path that is through indirect tunnel so you have to uh, means now i'll uh, provide you downlink packets through new downlink bearer that has been established at step number 3 here okay so so as soon as uh, e node b receives the em packet now it will receive the downlink packets through this downlink bearer okay that has been established in step number 3 okay okay so downlink packets are following this path now means they are not means downlink packets are not following the path of indirect tunnel they are directly forwarded to target e node b let's uh, call it uh, step number 6 okay now the step number 7 will be uh, guys i have written t e node b it's actually target e node b uh, okay i hope you can understand t stands for target e node b okay let's come to step number 6 has been done so step number 7 will come and this is known as handover notify acknowledge message okay means i am me sending to target e node b that uh and or notify message has been acknowledged and everything is going as per your or a requirement okay now next step will be mme will send that is uh, step number 8 mme mme will send ue on text release mes message to uh, source e node b means mme will ask source e node b to release all uh, resources that is s1 resources uh, which were reserved uh, for ue so it will release all the resources uh, for s1 bearer and s1 signaling so this bearer will be removed and this signaling will not be available okay and also um, 
and also this MMA will also uh, send message to SGW to delete indirect tunnel this will be the tenth message that is delete indirect tunnel this is the tenth message that has been sent from uh, MME to SGW and this message will uh, tell SGW to release all the resources that uh, has been reserved for this indirect tunnel okay so these tunnels will be removed as well so now uh, downlink packets are following path this that is from SGW to target in would be and to UE this is the downlink packet paths and uplink packet path will be UE to target in would be and then to SGW okay so this is the handover completion uh, I hope you like the video thank you